Joining me here exclusively at the Reagan National Defense Forum, Sham Sankar, CTO of Palantir Technologies, which is up more than 215% since the start of the year. Sham, it's really good to have you here with me. Thanks for being here. Thanks for having me, Morgan. Um, you do have technology deployed in Ukraine. You also work very closely with the Department of Defense here in the U.S. and other government agencies. Uh, is your software being deployed to Israel, too? Yeah, absolutely. I actually have come to Reagan from Tel Aviv. Uh, so we are proud, you know, we've been unequivocal in our support for Israel and their right to defend themselves against these barbaric attacks. And we've worked in Israel since at least 2014. Okay. I mean, we talk a lot about demand for hardware and weapons and uh, munitions stockpiling, uh, et cetera. Are we seeing the same sort of demand for software and technologies? Yeah. The need to make better decisions quicker that are more precise, more protective of civilians, that uh, enable you to take the advantage over the adversary has never been more clear. We're, we've seen that play out on the battlefield of Ukraine and how asymmetric that capability can be. We're seeing it play out in totally different domains like Israel now. And there are a lot of lessons here that I think are going to apply as we think about the Pacific theater. Okay. Lessons like some examples? How are you going to fight in a coalition environment? You think about, of course, Israel has to do so much, but we're supporting not only Israel, but also her allies. How are allies involved? There's the logistics and supply chain element of this, but there's also the broader collaboration, situational awareness, the evacuation of noncombatants. Uh, we have to bring all of those things that we really started learning since Afghanistan uh, to bear in the next theaters that, that provide geopolitical challenge for us. And of course, Palantir is uh, a dual use technology company, really one of the first ones to the public market. So, so you work with government. You also work with commercial and private sector as well. Uh, and you're also one of those companies that has been deploy, working on developing and deploying AI for quite a number of years now. So as other companies are thinking about investments, you're already monetizing your investments. Um, these AIP boot camps yeah. that were talked about uh, in the third quarter, earnings, these artificial intelligence platform boot camps. Uh, I think there had been an expectation that maybe you would sign on uh, 140 companies in the month of November to these boot camps. I guess walk me through what they are and how many people, how many companies have shown interest. Yeah, so th these boot camps, we've rebuilt our entire go to market around it because it's really this magical experience where you get your hands on the keyboard for eight hours and you leave that experience with the production ready use case. And with even more than that, a deep and intuitive understanding of how do you apply this technology to get real results, more than a proof of concept, actual proof that you can take to your enterprise and get results. And so th this has been a profound change for us. And we've been, so we ended November, we thought we'd do 140. We did it for 200 organizations. We're on track this year to, to serve 325 organizations with boot camps. Um, and we've really focused on commercial so far this year, particularly focused on U.S. commercial. Next year and into December here, we're really going to be bringing this to the U.S. government as well. And we saw it in the third quarter reaccelerate growth on the commercial side. Um, it also, I would imagine, lowers your marketing costs and creates a stickier environment in terms of more companies coming on board. Is that what you're continuing to see? We're continuing to see that. I think one of the most profound effects of, let's call it 2023, the year of reinvention around ChatGPT is the expectation that software is actually going to work uh, and the accountability that's around that. So uh, people want to leave with eight hours of effort realizing they can put something in production. I do want to talk to you about something else that is on your website, but I don't know that has that it has been discussed very much publicly yet. And that is Palantir Web Government Services. Is this a new business strategy for Palantir? Yeah, the, the idea is, you know, we were one of the first defense, defense tech companies. We spent 20 years kind of building this wormhole between modern American software and the defense department. And there's not just your product. There's all of this software infrastructure you need just to get to the starting line when you're dealing with an institution like the DOD. How do you get on their networks? How do you deal with accreditation? How do you get to data? We now have $100 billion of capital deployed through VCs, hundreds of new entrants in this category, which is so exciting. I want to help them succeed. And uniquely, Palantir has spent the last 20 years banging our head against the wall, needing to develop technologies that I know they're going to need to get to the starting line. And so Palantir Government Web Services is really about bringing that to them, helping them uh, succeed faster, bend the revenue curve, bend the cost curve, uh, get to that next round and survive the valley of death. I, I mentioned the fact that you're already realizing returns uh, on all of your AI investments and software investments. You've had four quarters of profitability. You're now eligible for possible entry into the S&P 500. Are you expecting that? Are you gaming that out? What would that mean for the company? I think it's one of the things that you can't really have expectations around. But what I think it would mean for the company, and actually, more importantly, the broader defense tech ecosystem, it's been 45 years since an actual defense company, one not born out of mergers and spin outs and other financial engineering, but a new venture formation has been added to the S&P 500. The, the primes, they were added on March 4th, 1957, which is the 
the year that the indice was created. So that doesn't feel like American dynamism to me. I think this is, it feels more like the sclerotic nature of European capital markets. And I think we should bring the best of America to this. And I hope we would be the first of many of these hundreds of defense companies that have an opportunity to, to participate.